What up, what up, everyone? We've got Ken's. Say hi, Ken's. Hi. Oh, I'm so excited to have Miss Mackenzie Burks in the house. We've got so much to get through and such little time. So we're going to get down to business. Ken's, you're going to start down on all fours, man. you got a cat cow. So shoulders stack over wrist, knees are on your hips. You're going to drop the belly button down to the ground, look up to the sky, shoulders out of ears. And then slow and steady exhale, push the spine up, 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 look at the belly button. Nice job. Drop it down, look up to the sky. And big exhale, push the spine up to the sky, look at the belly button. Yeah, Ken's, nice job. Two more, just like that, big cat cows. I want you guys to really tap into your spine here. Feel every little nook and cranny and just let it feel good. Just let it feel good. Nice job, Ken's. Slow and steady cat cows. Good. From here, Ken's, I'm gonna have you come down to your side facing us. We're gonna go side hip circles. So actually putting that elbow directly underneath the shoulder. Nice, stack those knees nice up at your belly button. Shift back a little bit for me, Ken's. Um, your whole body, actually. Yeah, so you'll just get further back towards the wall. There you go, nice. Okay, from here, watch first, fam. I'm gonna have Ken's brace that top arm over her hip so you can plant that, plant that hand down right in front of you. Draw your top knee into your chest. Keep your hips stacked, your pelvis tucked. Now open that knee out wide. Yeah, notice Ken's is still keeping her hips stacked, her pelvis tucked. Then she's gonna rotate that leg all the way back and around like she's kicking that back wall. She's gonna keep her pelvis tucked, squeeze the glute, don't roll onto that hip. And then draw that knee all the way back through center. So this is that ball and socket joint of the hip. Now join us here. Ken's shoulder is out of her ear, her hips are stacked, her core is active. She's slowly hitting every little bit of that ball and socket joint in the hip. So drive into the chest, open it out wide to the armpit, kick it all the way back and around, keep the hips stacked, the pelvis tucked, and drive that back heel back, back, back to that back wall. Nice. Last two, Ken's, last two. Five in total here, fam. In, out, around, and back. Now the goal of this hip circle is to isolate every other part of the body. Nothing else moves but the ball and socket joint of your hip. Nice job. Good. And rest. From here we've got to switch directions. So stay on that same side. Reset your body. Make sure that shoulder stays out of the ear. Draw the belly button back. Tuck the knees up to the chest. Good. And then start to kick that leg back. Squeeze the glute. Tuck the pelvis. Open that knee out wide into the armpit. And then squeeze your inner thighs together. Nice job. You have four more, five in total. Kick it back. Keep the hips stacked. Do not let anything else move here. I know you feel like if you sink into your low back, you'll have more space, but it's actually just a compensation. The goal is to really isolate, like I keep saying, the ball and socket joint of the hip. This movement is truly the movement that saved my hips. I was experiencing so much low back pain pinching all through my piriformis, which is the part of the glute, right, where the meaty part is. And once I started doing these hip circles and really tapping into the full range of motion through my ball and socket joint, all of that pain went away, which is what I want for you guys, five on each side. But you can't compensate and tap into the low back if you want to really work through the joint properly. So take it slow and really feel that connection. Switch sides, Ken. That was beautiful, by the way. Miss Mackenzie Brooks, everyone. Stellar hip circles all around. Shoulders stay out of ears. Belly button tucks. Scoop the hips and draw that knee up. Out. Around. Keep the hips stacked, right? That's the point where you want to roll back, but don't. And then come back in through center. Really fight to keep that core active. So if I were to push on Ken's core right now, she would be bracing through center, which just basically means that you're drawing that belly button back to meet the spine and contracting through center. You have five in each direction. And I want you to just slow these down, smooth them out, think circles through the hip. Nice, Ken's really fight to keep that top right hip stacked. So you saw, if you watched Ken's last rep, a little bit that top hip start to roll open. Fair. But I want you to fight, keep those hips stacked so that you can tap all into the bottle and socket joint. 
your range of motion might not look as big as Ken's. I know mine doesn't. I have much tighter hips. And so mine doesn't get quite as wide as I rotate back. So do what feels right for you within this range of motion and really feel that glute, really feel that core. Nice job, Ken. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Five in each direction on each side. Get it, get it, girl. Nice job. Perfect. Hip stacked, belly button tucked, squeeze the glute, drive it into the armpit, and then squeeze those inner thighs together. Keep the shoulder out of the ear. Yeah. Nice job. Five in each direction on each side. Now you guys might move it a little bit different pace than Ken's and I throughout the duration of this workout, and that's totally okay. That's totally okay. Do what feels right for you and your body. Push yourself to your best, safest, and greatest effort. It's always my rule. It's always my rule. Nice job, Ken's. Good. Okay, five on each side. Perfect. We're going to move from the mobility portion of class into our activation portion. So we're going to really focus on turning on the upper back, the core, and the glutes. So movement number one for our activation doubles as a really nice mobility-based movement as well. It's a scap retraction from a quadruped position. I know those are a lot of fancy words, but basically come on to all fours, just like the cat-cow. Knees are under hips, shoulders are over wrists. Now for a scap retraction, it's not like the cat-cow, right? You're gonna tuck your pelvis, draw your belly button up to your spine, get strong through your core. From here, just through your shoulder blades, keeping the shoulders out of the ears, squeeze my fingers, Ken. And then push my fingers away. Good, squeeze my fingers, and then push my fingers away. So she's drawing her shoulder blades back and together, really tapping into her scapular retractors. You have 10 scap push-ups. Keep the arms straight, the shoulders out of the ears. 10 scap push-ups in total. Nice job, Ken. Nice. Good job, Ken. Shoulders stay out of ears. That core is firing. You're not compensating by shrugging those shoulders up, up, up. You're staying all through those upper back muscles, those postural muscles that keep our posture so beautiful, rolled back and together. Think about standing up nice and tall as you do this, connecting to those muscles. Nice job, Ken. Okay, from here, we're going to come into your core. So come onto your back. You have what's called a half sit up. Feet plant a couple inches from your bum. Bring your hands behind the back of your head. You're going to lift your head and shoulders up off the ground and seal your low back down so there's no space between your low back and the ground. From here, look up to the sky so don't pull on the neck and audibly exhale, lift up an inch higher. Then come back to the starting position. Up an inch higher. Come back to the starting position. Beautiful, Ken. So never let your head and shoulders touch the ground. 30 seconds starts in three. 30 seconds starts in two. 30 seconds starts now. Let's go. Lift up and lower. Lift up and lower. So nice. Not pulling on the neck. Keeping the low back seal. The core nice and active. You have 30 seconds of half sit-ups. It's probably burning by now. It hurts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really contract through center. Keep your low back sealed down to the ground. Don't pull on that neck. Just support the head. In five. In four. In three. In two. And one. Nice job, Ken's. Scat push-ups, man. All fours. You're going to draw those shoulder blades back and together. Shoulders stay out of ears. Let's go. Just 10 scat push-ups this time. 10 scat push-ups. Remember, keep your belly button drawn up to the spine. I just use belly button to spine as a visualization of keeping your core engaged. I want you to think about keeping a soft tuck of the pelvis and keeping your core muscles really engaged while you're going through this. And visually, if you need to see it again, it's the difference between sinking into this and sinking into this, right? My glutes squeeze and I draw my belly button back to tap my spine. Nice job. From here, you have 30 seconds of the half sit up. Take your time with the scapular retractions and meet us here when you're ready in three, in two, and one. 30 seconds starts now, Ken. Keep that low back sealed down on the ground. Again, those are just words that I use to paint a picture of drawing your belly button down and taking any space from the low back in the ground out of the equation. So if I were to slide my hand underneath Mackenzie's low back, I wouldn't be able to because her core is engaged. She sealed that low back down, okay? If you ever have questions on any of those visualizations that I use, please ask and please reach out with any uh, 
additional coaching needs in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Woo. Nice job, Pens. Okay, we're going to continue with activations, but they're going to look a little like strength training because it's kind of a combo act one. Yay! <laughs> Pop up to your feet. You're going to grab onto a medium to heavy band pen and put it over the top of the knees. Over the top of the knees. Nice job. You're going to plop down into a squat on the far right-hand side of the mat. And then first, just shift your hips back, dig your heels in, find a nice squat position. Good. Nice. From here, you're going to step left wide to regular and then stand up. Pop back down into the squat, step out wide to regular, stand all the way up. Join our fam. We're going to go three in each direction. Wide, regular, stand all the way up. So one thing I want to point out that people always miss here is Ken's feet are never coming closer than hip distance apart. Never. Because she would lose tension on the band. Wide, regular, stand all the way up. Okay, let's go back the other direction. Ken's wide, regular, stand all the way up. Wide, regular, stand all the way up. Nice job. Keep going. I want three in each direction, and I want three laps in total. Three in each direction, and I want three laps in total. Really take a second every time you stand up and sit back into that squat to give me perfect squat form with your hips shifting back and your heels digging in. That's why I'm having you stand up in between reps is I want you to make sure before you take off on that lateral step that you're set up for success. Shifting your hips back, digging your heels in. Beautiful, Ken's. So that was two laps for Ken's. I want three in total. Remember, three laps each direction. Let the glutes burn. Let the glutes burn. Nice job, Ken. She's shifting those hips back. She's digging her heels in. Her shoulders are out of her ears. She's staying so strong through center. Hey, hey, hey. Nice job, Ken. Nice job, Ken. Good. Last one. Perfect. You can take that band off and set it off the side. I make off. It's actually kind of mean of me. But I'm just, it's because I know they're strong. I make all my fit models do the extra heavy band. And so they literally, by the end, are like, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, from here, guys, we're going to go into our second movement, which, like I said, kind of doubles as a little bit of an activation, but more strength. So I'm going to point Mackenzie towards the door jam so you guys can see our setup. So what we did is we tied a nice little knot in our band. And then we stuck it in the door jam so that it stuck. So give it a pull, Ken. Because I tied a knot at the edge of the band, it's stuck in the door jam, so we're safe to pull on it. So from here, I'm gonna have you come down to a half kneel, pens facing the door. Yeah, nice. So I want that right knee forward. And then I'll have you come out this way, pens. Yeah, there you go. So you're straight on from the door jam. And then when she sets it up, I'm gonna just be really strict here. I want her pelvis tucked, her core active. Dig your front heel in. Shoulders stay out of ears, Kent. You're going to row tight. Elbows come in tight to your sides. Good. Wrists come to rib cage. Get a really nice grip on the band. Palms facing one another. And then extend your arms out long. Good. Nice. Shoulder blades squeeze. 15 reps here. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. But don't pop out through the ribs. So I'll say that a lot, right? Don't pop out through the ribs. Because when people row, they think they can get more if they pop out through the ribs. But I want you to keep your core active and isolate your upper back muscles. Keep your shoulders down out of your ears and squeeze my finger. Pretend I'm over there. Squeeze my finger. You've got 15. 15 in total. Nice job, Ken. These look so good. Keeping the pelvis tucked, the core active. The further you are from the door jam, obviously the harder this movement is going to be. Nice job, Ken. Okay, from here, you're back to those banded lateral steps. Let's do it, man. I'm going to give us a nice little adjustment. And there she is. Okay, same thing. We've got banded lateral steps right to left. Stand all the way up. Reset your squat form every time. Making Ken's work that extra heavy band. Just building my fit model strength. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> nice, Ken's. Three steps each direction. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. Feet go wide to regular. They should never come closer than hip distance apart because then you lose tension on the band. 
I want you guys to see, Ken's is paying such close attention to her body right now. She's focusing on the glutes. She's focusing on her breath. She's focusing on her core. Her shoulders are staying out of her ears. I love all of this really, really detail-oriented focus in this movement because it's gonna get her so much more out of it in the long run. Nice job, Ken's. Proud of you, ma'am. I got you. I got you. Nice job. 15, 15. We'll go to the rows. As soon as she finishes her three laps of the banded steps, she has 15 rows. Nice job, Ken. Take that band off. And come back to the door jam. Let me give you a nice little shift here. Oop. Reminder, you can set it up, tie a nice little knot in the door or in your band, and then just slip it right into the door jam. Good, Ken's. Now I want your left foot forward, tuck your pelvis, shoulders back, ribs don't pop, core is active, let's row, elbows come in tight to the body. Wrist to rib cage, squeezing the shoulder blades together. So nice, really good form here. Draw those elbows back, back, back. Remember, palms face each other. Grab onto the band as best you can. Find that sweet spot here. Good, Ken's. No popping out through those ribs. Keep it so strong through your core. 15 in total. It's a lot. Your upper back should be sore after. Your upper back should be sore after. I know, I know. Good. Shoulders down, Ken, especially as you get tired. Shoulders down, especially as you guys start to get tired. Good. Last couple here. You can hear Ken's breath into the movement. So nice. Hey okay, guys, from here we have two movements two rounds. We're gonna still need that band in the door jam. I'm gonna go ahead and demo this out for you first, Mackenzie. So from here, you're gonna come into a half kneel. So back, right knee down, front left knee forward. You'll grab onto the band in a fist. So interlace your fingers, make a fist, then pull that band straight out. You're gonna hold through center, tucking your pelvis, tucking your ribs, and staying so, so strong, arms straight, shoulders out of ears. So let's set this up. Left knee forward, back right knee down. The band should be coming from the right hand side. Okay? Nice, Ken. So tuck the pelvis to start, and then pull that band out. Make a fist for me with your hands. Yeah, there you go. And then pull out. Palms face one another. There it is. Stabilize through the core. In five, we're gonna go in four, three, two, one. So Ken's obliques are firing. Her front heel is digging. Her shoulders stay down. If she wants it to be harder, she'd scooch her closer towards me, but I'd imagine she's probably had enough. Hold here. You've got 15 seconds left. It's 30 in total. 15 seconds left, 30 in total. Breathe into it. Really feel your obliques light up. I know. Starts to burn about eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, from here, Ken's is going to have to turn her back to us. Now she's going to go right knee forward, left knee back. She's going to grab onto the band from the left hand side, make the fist guys, interlace your fingers, shoulders stay out of ears, and pull that band through the center. I want your palms facing one another, shoulders stay down, 30 seconds has started. Tuck the ribs, engage the core. Dig, dig, dig through that right heel. Nice job. This is one of the best anti-rotation based movements that you can do to train your obliques. So stay so strong here. I know it starts to get hard right about now because you only have 15 seconds left. Keep going, keep going. Nice job, Ken. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Okay, movement number two. So you're gonna take this band, I'll demo it out again. You're gonna take this band that's so lovingly trapped in the door jam, and you're gonna tie it into a little knot. So you have a, a, a big circle here. Choo, choo, choo. Tie it into a knot so you have a big circle here. From here, you're gonna go into boop, a hamstring curl. So we're gonna actually move this down in the door jam. I want it a little lower, right about here. Right about here, you gotta lay it flat and then shut it in that door jam. There it is. Okay, so now you've got a giant circle, right? You're gonna come onto your tummy. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> come onto your tummy. You're gonna flex your feet, push your pelvis down to the ground. Scoot as far out as you can, 
from the door frame, forehead down to the ground. From here, you're going to extend, drive your heels to your glutes. Extend, drive your heels to your glutes. Really squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as you draw those heels in nice and tight to your bum. I want you to think about your hamstrings, okay? I know it seems weird, but I promise you, it is the best hamstring mind-body connector you will ever do. Come on your tummy, Ken. Ken knows. I used to make her do these all the time. Ugh. Okay. Heels come into the band. Flex the feet for me, Ken's. Tuck the pelvis, squeeze the glutes, and then start to draw the heels towards the bum as much as you can, and then extend them. And heels towards the glutes. Ham, 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 and then extend them. You have 15 in total, fam. 15 in total. I know this one seems weird. I'm under no illusion that this is a, a normal thing to do, but I promise you, if you do this, you're gonna feel the hamstrings like never before. Deadlifting is gonna make so much more sense to you if we turn the hamstrings on from this position. Squeeze through the glutes, anchor down through the pelvis. There's no space between the hips and the ground and draw those heels in tight to your bum. Nice job. 15 hamstring curls. Now Ken's has really, it's okay to say it, right Ken's weak hamstrings? Yes. Ken's has really <laughs> weak hamstrings, but really flexible hamstrings. It's So it's been, an interesting learning experience for her while training. So this allows her to connect to the muscles in her hamstrings, but doesn't get in the way of how flexible she is. So I want everyone right now, squeeze the glutes, pull the heels towards the bum, feel the hamstrings. You might even get a cramp through those hamstrings. Oh, there's so many cramps. Oh, she has so many cramps. That's 15, bam, that's 15. Okay. From here, we're back to that peel off hold. We gotta go for round two. I'm gonna take this bad boy up in the door jam. Again, you want it about chest height from a kneeling position. So I'd say right about here for Ken's. Okay, Ken, come up to that half kneel. You can actually leave the knot in. It's kind of nice for the peel off pull. From here, she's gonna bring her left shin forward. Yep, nice. And her right knee back, arms come straight out and then through center, clock starts in three, clock starts in two, clock starts in one. Really anchor down, yeah, nice, Ken's good. All through this oblique, all through this oblique. Shoulders stay out of ears, arms stay straight out from the chest, stay strong through center, breathe into it, it's 30 seconds. I love a pay off hold. You guys can hear Ken's audible exhales right now. She's connecting to the movement. Nice job, in 10, in nine, in eight, in seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and one. Nice. Six sides, six sides. I love these bands. They can do so much. Set that right knee out. That left knee is back. Yeah. Tuck the pelvis. Draw the shoulders down. And then pull through center. Yep, 30 seconds starts in three. 30 seconds starts in two. 30 seconds starts now. So the way to connect to your obliques the best. Dig that front right heel down. Scoop the hips under. Draw the belly button back. And exhale. You gotta inhale too, but you get it. exhale to really connect to those obliques. Yeah, Ken's nice. One common mistake I do see in a pale off hold is a lot of the time people lean forward into it. Make sure you're not leaning forward. I want you tall, 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 tall through that spine. Nice job, fam. 15 seconds left. Yes, Ken's keep going. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Okay, so again, we're gonna set this a little bit lower in the door jam. I'd say probably about kneecap height would be a good move for the hamstring curl. Go. Skill. Skill. Okay, got that band around your heels. Toes are in, flex the feet, squeeze those glutes, draw the heels in tight. It's straight like this, not like this. Yes, yeah, so I want those knees in line with the hips. That was a good question. I want those knees in line with the hips. Squeeze, 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 and draw in, Ken's. The further you are from the door jam, the harder this is gonna be. And out, nice job. And ham, 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 and out. Beautiful. Okay, okay, nice job, fam. We're almost through. This is our last round of this circuit. I know, it's some fun, different, creative stuff. Always coming at you guys with all this cool, different stuff. Make sure you set that band up correctly for this circuit. Just get comfortable playing around with your bands. 
tying knots, sticking them in the door jam, all that kind of stuff. If in this first workout you felt like, oh gosh, I don't know about all this banded stuff, just be patient. You really do get comfortable with it as you go. You have 15 hamstring curls and you find that you're able to connect your body in such a cool, different way just by approaching it in such a cool and different way. Nice job, Ken's. 15, I know. She's starting to cramp. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> She's done. <laughs> nice job, Ken. Nice job. Okay, from here we're going to take all that banded work and we're going to really get down with a nice st strength training circuit using some weight. So, Ken's movement number one. You're going to do a deadlift with one dumbbell. Deadlift with one dumbbell. So you're going to grab onto your heavier set of dumbbells. Now, because we turned the hamstrings on, you're ready for this. You're going to hinge at the hips with a nice flat back. Feet are about hip distance apart. You keep the weights touching your body the whole time. Think hammy, 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 and stand all the way up. Hinge at the hips with a nice flat back. Think hammy, 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 stand all the way up. Okay? So the two things that I'm really particular on here, soft bend in the knees, shoulders stay rolled back. Don't drop into a squat. It's a hinge, okay? Let's do it, Ken. Grab onto those dumbbells. Feet are about hip distance apart, soft bend in the knees. Roll the shoulders back. And then before you take off, I want you to think about isometrically pulling your heels together. Now that doesn't mean that you'll move the heels. It just means you'll think about pulling them towards one another down on the ground. You have 12 deadlifts. Nice job. Now let's say you start this deadlift and instantly you're like, ooh, this really bothers my low back. I'm not ready for this yet. Maybe you haven't necessarily connected to the core enough to go through this movement pattern and that's okay. You're gonna come back to the door jam and you're gonna do that hamstring curl again. Okay, nice, Ken, keep those shoulder blades back and together, soft bend in the knees, at the bottom of the deadlift, pull the heels together, at the top of the deadlift, pull the heels together, keep the chin tucked, the neck in line with the spine, the core active, you've got 12 in total, Ken's 12 in total. Nice job, man. They look okay? Yeah, they look so good. So Ken's is checking in. She wants to know how her form looks. If you guys want to take a peek up here for a demo, you can see she's shifting her hips back with a soft bend in the knees. Her spine is long, her core is active, and the weights are staying tight into her body the whole time. It's just 12 reps. You can hear the audible exhale as Ken stands all the way up, engaging her core. Nice. Ken's, did you feel your hamstrings when you first started deadlifting with me? No. Be patient, guys. If that was really challenging for you, be patient. Endless hamstring curls are the answer. <laughs> Come on to all fours. We're going to go into a quadruped row. Grab onto the weights in each hand. Nice. Yeah. Shoulders stack over wrists. Knees come under hips. You guys know this position well. From here, shoulders roll back out of ears. Pelvis tucks. Core is active. Draw the right elbow up tight to the side of the body. And extend. Left elbow up tight to the side of the body. And extend next. You have 12 on each side. I want wrist to rib cage here, fam. Wrist to rib cage. Elbow tight. I always say, think about squeezing your bat wings, which are the muscles along your upper back. Nice job. Really make sure that you keep the core contracted here. No dropping into that low back. Beautiful, beautiful form. Nice job, Ken's. She's showing you how it's done. She's staying so strong through center. 12 each side. We have one more round of deadlift to row and then we're done, fam. Then you're done. All strength, all day. I love a workout like this. I know some people love the strength conditioning combo or they love doing all conditioning, but my favorite days in the gym are always the all strength days because I just feel so connected, so tuned into my body, sore in the right places. It's just the best, and, and especially with a workout like this where we've been so thoughtful and so slow and steady, you're going to get so much out of this. Okay, let's go. Deadlift stands 12. Feet are hip distance apart. Soft bend in the knees. Draw the shoulder blades back and together. Hinge at the hips with a nice flat back, long spine, and hinge. Stand all the way up. Nice job. Think hammies. Much like the muscles from that hamstring curl should be really, really working for you here. 
Think about isometrically pulling your heels together to turn the hamstrings on. Keep the shoulder blades back and together. Channel that scapular retraction or that banded row. Engage the core as you ascend. And I know when I describe a deadlift, I'm describing 800 muscles. And that's why if you're not here today, that's okay. I want you to stick with that banded hamstring curl for now, okay? We all work at different levels here and that's totally fine. You gotta find what feels best for you and your body. 12 deadlifts, audible exhales as you stand all the way up. Yes, Ken's, yes. Nice job, man. She's so strong. Feeling it all through the posterior chain, come down to all fours, you've got your last quadruped row. So knees are under hips, shoulders stack over wrists. Draw that belly button up to the spine and start to row. Elbows come tight into the sides. I want you to think about your bat wings or the muscles along your upper back. Those are your lats. Those are your lats. Nice job. Good, Ken's 12 each side, fam, 12 each side. Finish this movement strong, knowing that the end is just around the corner. Good, shoulders stay out of ears. Think all about those upper back muscles. You're so strong. Let's finish all together. Get on, try and get on pace with Ken's here as we go. Right arm, left arm. Yeah, right arm, left arm. Good, Ken's last couple here. Finish your 12, fam. Oh, I love the breath. I love the connection to the body. Last one each side. Damn. And rest. Come on to your back soles, the feet to touch, knees come out wide. One hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. Supta Baddha Konasana. Now, everyone, give yourself three deep inhales and exhales. I'm so proud of you guys. As always, you absolutely crushed it. And I am so excited to see what is to come for us as you continue with these workouts. Be patient with the bands and continue to learn every step of the way. We'll see you next time.